Respiratory therapy is a growing field that offers many opportunities for those who are interested in working in the medical field. If you're interested in becoming a respiratory therapist, there's a few required steps that must be completed, which is the topic of this video. Keep watching because I'm going to break down each step that is necessary for becoming a respiratory therapist. So, if you're ready, let's get into it. A respiratory therapist is a medical professional who specializes in the treatment of diseases that affect the lungs. RTs work with patients of all ages, from infants to the elderly population. They provide care for those suffering from acute and chronic respiratory conditions such as asthma, COPD, and heart failure. In addition to treating patients, respiratory therapists also play an important role in educating the public about respiratory health and disease prevention. As previously mentioned, there are a few steps that must be completed in order to become a licensed respiratory therapist. First, and most importantly, you must have a natural desire to help others. This is an important quality for any medical professional, but it's especially important for respiratory therapists. That's because they work with patients who are often in a great deal of pain and discomfort. Therefore, RTs must be compassionate and empathetic in order to provide the best possible care for their patients. Which means that this career path has to be more than just a paycheck. Step 2 is to graduate from high school. Those who want to enroll in respiratory therapy school must have a high school diploma or GED equivalent to be eligible. Step 3 is to take the required prerequisite courses. These courses will vary depending on the respiratory therapy program you choose, but they typically include subjects such as anatomy and physiology, chemistry, college algebra, and English composition. Again, it's important to check the requirements for each school you're interested in to see what specific prerequisite courses are required. After completing all prerequisite courses and other requirements, the next step is to submit applications to the school that you're interested in. There are many accredited respiratory therapy programs to choose from, so it's important to do your research and select the one that's a best fit for you. Once you've been accepted into a program, the next step is to enroll by formally accepting the offer of administration. This essentially locks in your position in the program and ensures that you'll have a spot in the class. Step 6 is to successfully complete the required courses offered by your program. Some examples of the most common respiratory therapy courses include the Fundamentals of Respiratory Care, Cardiopulmonary A&P, Patient Assessment, Pharmacology, Airway Management, Mechanical Ventilation, Neonatal and Pediatric Care, and Cardiopulmonary Pathology. We have hundreds of free study guides that have helped thousands of students pass their exams in respiratory therapy school. Check out the links below if you want to learn more. But, in addition to completing the required coursework, students must also complete a certain number of clinical hours. This typically includes a combination of classroom instructions and hands-on training in a hospital or other medical setting. Acquiring hands-on clinical experience as a student is one of the most essential steps in becoming a respiratory therapist. The number of clinical hours required will vary depending on the program you're in, but it's typically between 500 and 1000 hours. After successfully completing all academic and clinical requirements, the next step is to graduate with an associate's degree in respiratory therapy. This is the standard entry level degree for this profession. Step 9 is to pass the NBRC credentialing exams. In order to earn the credentials needed to practice respiratory care, graduates must pass a series of exams administrated by the National Board of Respiratory Care. There are two board exams that graduates must pass, the TMC exam and clinical SIMS. In order to become a registered respiratory therapist, you must first pass the TMC exam with a high cut score. This makes you eligible to take the clinical SIMS which, if passed, awards you with the RRT credential. The TMC and Clinical Sims exam are both computer-based and are offered year-round at testing centers across the country. Step 10 is to apply for a license. After earning credentials by passing the NBRC exams, the next step is to apply for a license in the state in which you plan to work. 
This allows you to legally practice respiratory care in that particular state. Each state has its own process and requirements for licensure, so it's important to check with your state's licensing board for specific details. If you'd like to practice in multiple states, you'll need to obtain a separate license for each state. Step 11 is to apply for a job. Now that you're licensed and credentialed, you're ready to apply for a job and start your career as a respiratory therapist. The best way to find employment is to search for open positions on job boards or websites like Indeed.com. You can also reach out to local hospitals or clinics directly and inquire about any open positions or upcoming job fairs. Once you land an interview, be sure to dress professionally and arrive early. Be prepared to answer questions about why you would be a good fit for the position. Step 12 is to advance your career. Once you have some experience under your belt working as a respiratory therapist, there are many opportunities to advance your career. This involves acquiring one or more of the specialty credentials offered by the NBRC. This includes the Adult Critical Care Specialist, Neonatal Pediatric Specialist, Sleep Disorders Specialist, or the Certified or Registered Pulmonary Function Technologist. Earning one of these credentials allows you to specialize in a certain area of respiratory care. This can help you attain a better job, which often commands a higher salary. Respiratory therapists can also advance their careers by obtaining a bachelor's or master's degree in a related field. This can lead to positions with more responsibility such as management roles or jobs in research or education. Step 13 is to maintain your certification. That's right, another important aspect of being a respiratory therapist is maintaining the license and credentials that you worked so hard to obtain. This usually involves completing assessments and continuing education units or CEUs on a periodic basis. The steps for doing this may vary by state and credentials, so it's important to stay up to date with the latest requirements. Failing to maintain your credentials and certifications can lead to the loss of your license, which would effectively make you ineligible to practice respiratory care. So, taking everything I mentioned into consideration, my question to you is this. Is respiratory therapy the right career for you? If you're unsure, here's some things to consider. Are you interested in working in the medical field? Do you have a passion for helping others? Do you have good communication and interpersonal skills? Do you have the ability to stay calm under pressure? Are you grossed out by mucus or blood? These are all questions that you must take into consideration before making the decision to become a respiratory therapist. And I should also mention that, in my opinion, one of the downsides of being an RT is that the job can be physically and emotionally demanding. Respiratory therapists are often required to work long hours, and they regularly care for patients who are in a great deal of pain or suffering from life-threatening illness. Which means that it can be tough treating patients who are in their final days, which is definitely one of the most unfortunate parts of the job. However, to me, the rewards of the job far outweigh the challenges. This is why I believe that respiratory therapist is such a great career. It's definitely not easy, but with the right attitude and determination, anyone can succeed in this field. If you're up for the challenge, follow the steps outlined in this video to become a respiratory therapist and enter the rewarding profession of respiratory care. If you want to support the channel, be sure to like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. And there should be some other helpful videos popping up on your screen right about now that I think you'll enjoy. And just a quick reminder, we're not doctors. This video is for informational purposes only. Thank you so much for watching. Have a blessed day. And as always, breathe easy, my friend.